Hi, I'm Clay Allison, inventor of the Wicked Edge. Come on into our testing area. We're going to examine some different aspects of knife sharpening. I'm just finishing up this chef's knife here. Nothing extraordinary about the knife at all. It's just a, a simple one-man Henkel uh, out of a set that I bought at Target. Um, we keep a lot of these around for testing here in the shop. And uh, right now I was just dropping it. I had been demonstrating a moment ago uh, how it does with paper and how it does with the tomato. So after stropping it just now, uh, you can see that it's you know, just very, very sharp. Uh, I can also kind of show with the tomato, you know, that it's cutting just beautifully on this tomato. We can cut real tiny little slivers if we want. And this is actually a very squishy kind of, kind of old tomato for the purpose of showing how sharp it is. And um, what I want to do today in this video is just walk through the steps of taking a knife from dull to very sharp on the wicked edge. I know a lot of you are going to cringe looking at this. Uh, this is just a, a standard bastard file, and I'm just going to wreck the edge of this poor knife with it. And, uh, you know, it's gone from, I believe, being really sharp to, I imagine now, kind of pitiful, but we'll take a look. I mean, uh, you know, I can, it's just not going to do the, the paper at all. I think uh, I really did some good damage to it with the file. And then I'm going to mount it in our clamp. And I use this key. It's called the depth key. And I insert it into the clamp here. And what it's going to do for me is it's going to control how deep into the clamp the knife goes. And the reason that's important is because when I go to touch up the knife again, like in this instance, I don't really want to recreate the whole entire bevel and take extra metal. What I want to do is just straighten the edge and polish it again. So by controlling the position, I control all the elements of the geometry involved in sharpening, and that makes sure that, um, that I'm doing the, the minimal amount of damage to the blade as I take metal off the bevel and then reshape it. So I'm going to start with our 100 grit stones. These are our coarse stones that come with the basic kit, the red handles. And I'm just going to use a simple motion. I can go like this up and away, or I can pull back into the blade. In fact, I can really go in any number of directions. Uh, a lot of times you'll see me on our videos doing a motion like this, and the reason is just for safety. But if you have a preference, uh, you can go in either direction. So here I am coming into the blade. And all I'm really doing here is just uh, working it enough to that I can see that there's scratches reaching all the way to the edge. and. Um, and once I've done that and I'm confident that the scratches are visually hitting the edge, then I'll pick on one side for a moment, maybe a few strokes, and then I'll see if, if we've created a burr on the opposite side of the one that I've been sharpening. And uh, I can certainly hear it and feel it with my fingernail. So I've got a burr going this way, and now I'm going to just repeat the same thing. And now I've got a burr on the opposite side all the way along the blade. So I, I know that now whatever damage I had done with the file to the knife and flattening out the actual edge, that's been erased. I've got two bevels now that meet in space at a nice fine point. So I can switch grits on the stones. I'm going to switch over here to the 200 grit orange handled stones and I'm just going to start the process of polishing the edge and um, wearing away that little wire edge. So I just switch back and forth few strokes and it's just like sanding wood this grits a little finer than the grit I just used before and what I'm doing is I'm replacing and smoothing the scratches from the previous grit with the next one one of the key aspects of the wicked edge is the ability to set the angle very precisely and I don't know if you can see those angle marks there on the bar they're they're marked every degree from 15 degrees out to 30 and I just slide these collars in and out till I got the angle that I want, which in this case I'm doing 15 degrees. Um, so, and I do it on both sides, make sure the angles are set and they're locked in. 
and then I continue with the po uh, process of polishing out the scratches from the previous stone. You can already hear the difference in the way the grit of this stone is sounding against the metal. It's a much finer, smoother sound. These are the 400 grit stones with the yellow handles, and I'm going to switch over to the 600 grit stones now. And again, you, you hear the difference right away. It's much softer, smoother sounding. And you can hear, you can actually tell just by hearing the places where I still need to do some polishing because it sounds a little rougher, a little scratchier. And I'm going to slide these off. At this point, the knife has already got a fantastic working edge. It's, it, you know, it's easily catching on my thumbnail there. It's, uh, it's incredibly sharp. And that's what comes with the basic kit and the Wicked Edge. Uh, the next set of stones that we offer as an accessory are these. They're the 800 and 1000 grit. The blue is 800 and the purple is 1000. And uh, a lot of people go for these stones. What they do is just continue to, to refine the edge and to smooth it out. And, uh, and they actually, they're, they're so smooth at this stage that they act as a steel almost. So that a lot of people will use these as their primary maintenance tool. And then I can switch over to the 1000 grit. And again, it's quieter still. When I'm switching over to the straps, I always clean the edge off. I want to get rid of any metal filings that are left over from the stones so that they don't uh, contaminate the straps when I use them. This leather has a diamond paste on it, and it's got a, just a tiny tacky quality, which easily picks up uh, any type of uh, contamination. So I try and store these always very neatly and cleanly in a plastic bag, and, uh, and I try and keep them away from any metal filings. So here I go with the leather straps. These are 14 micron straps. And this I do, this one has to be an up and away motion uh, just for the sheer fact that if I come into the blade with this, it will cut the leather. And uh, of course we got this idea from old barbers and the way that they would sharpen their straight razors. So now I'm onto the 10 micron straps, and you can see there's a few spots on here where I've come into the blade a couple times. Um, so these aren't pretty, they're just my working set that I use here in the shop every day. And so we're done with those. And for illustration purposes, I'll just show you the next set of straps that we have. On the uh, darker side here, these are 5 micron diamonds. And then on the lighter side, they're 3.5. Okay, so that's about as long as it took to really restore the edge from complete disaster with the file. And uh, should be able to just grab another piece of paper here and have it be as sharp as it was a minute ago before we put it on the file. So yeah, that's that's working great. It's uh, it's exactly what we expected.